All right, so this is kind of our last hurrah of the Ag Center um, for this year. And uh, we're just going to take a quick tour of the animals and kind of see what's up and <clears throat> maybe see if you guys have any questions that we haven't really talked about yet. Um, so these sheep that are here, um, there are seven of them in this pen, or I guess technically eight, but one of them is a weather that doesn't really count here. He's just hanging out. Um, so these seven big chubby-bellied sheep that are in here are going to be having babies, and they are due within the next week. Um, so you'll see one of the things, not only did we separate them out, um, but they've kind of got a freshly bedded pen. Um, we try to make things a little bit cozier. Their door is shut for the night. Um, that way, if they happen to go a little bit early and they happen to have babies uh, in the middle of the night when I'm not here to check them, um, everything uh, is kind of set to go and it should be warm enough out right now. There shouldn't be any issues. Um, now, as we get closer to them actually having their babies, I'll start checking them uh, a lot closer even than I am right now. Um, but a couple of things you can notice on these guys here. We'll see if we can get an overhead shot. Um, their bellies are starting to get fairly large here. Um, their hip bones are kind of starting to sink in just a little bit. That's kind of a sign they're getting closer to lambing. And the other thing, too, is their um, udder. She's like, what the heck? Their udder right down there is starting to kind of fill up a little bit. Um, so we can tell they're starting to get close now. They don't look like they're going to go within the next couple days. They still look like they have several days left. Um, but you can see here, uh, they, uh, they look a little bit different than they did even just a month ago. So there's a pretty big bellied one. Um, and as you can see, there's her udder starting to really fill up. So, so these guys are kind of living the cush life. They've got plenty of hay to munch on. Um, keep their bellies as full as we can, um, which is hard when they're full of that much baby. So, hopefully uh, within the next 10 days or so, you guys will be able to see some video clips of some baby lambs. But you can see here, we've got this hay pushed right over towards the gate so they can reach their heads through and uh, eat what they want without wasting, without running through it. So the goats are pretty much just chilling here, also kind of waiting to have babies. You'll see this pen was cleaned out pretty recently as well. Um, they're pretty well tucked in cozy for the night. They can still go in and out as far as they please. Um, but again, their gate is... Uh, Kind of blocked off a little bit to try to keep it a little warmer in here. And again, here's some of our La Mancha. So these guys don't have any ears. Uh, they're born that way. We don't cut them off or anything like that. We've got some Alpine, some Toggenberg, some other things that we've got uh, kind of over there. Here we've got a few younger goats that are sort of hanging out. These sheep that are all in here that are busy eating, they just got a bunch of hay thrown, uh, thrown to them. So they're kind of quiet before you couldn't hear anything. Um, but these sheep are all chilling here. They're going to have babies, um, all but one of them here, are going to be having babies um, anywhere from about January 17th uh, to kind of the middle to end of February is when these guys are due. So you'll notice here, um, these guys definitely are not as big bellied. Um, they don't really have anything. Uh, you can't really see because it's dark. They don't really have anything for, uh, for a bag or for an udder. Um, and so it'll be a little bit longer till we have to worry about babies for them. The cattle, and I know it's kind of dark over here. We'll try to get closer to some light. The cattle you can't even see because they are actually all outside. Um, they're out there munching on the hay on their bales, just kind of enjoying themselves. Um, let's see if we can maybe make this just a tad brighter. Um, but we've got uh, kind of the same amount of cattle that we had before. Um, hopefully that helped just a tad. Uh, so we've got these two little guys that are kind of hanging out here, and you literally cannot see them. You kind of see that one glisten on his nose right in front of my finger. Um, but these two are hanging out, so we have a student that's actually going to be showing um, at least the black one here. The other one's kind of his buddy. You can see the other one's white face. So the white face, red-bodied ones are Hereford. Um, we've got a few steers, and we've got uh, so three steers and six heifers that we've got out in these pens. So steers would be male cattle that we can't use for breeding or anything. Um, so basically going to be fattened up and taken to market at some point. And then the heifers are going to be shown. So some of the high school kids will show them at fair. And then uh, they'll be used for breeding someday. <coughs> Excuse me. I just put out hay so it's not corona sneezing. It's just hay sneezing. Okay. So that's kind of what things are looking like over here on the cattle side right now. So at this point in the day, it's pretty quiet. Everything's kind of a... Uh, Hunkering down for the evening. The sheep and the goats like to be in where it's a little warmer. Cattle really don't care. Cattle can withstand pretty cold temperatures and uh, 
and still be okay as long as I have a place to get out of the wind and a place to dry off when needed. So that's what it's kind of looking like over here. We'll kill some lights and head to the horse side. Alright, so over here on the horse side, we kind of came in the opposite side of uh, what we normally do as far as class goes. And you can see this time of the day, it's, uh, it's pretty quiet around here. Um, so we had some horses that kind of went home, so we have several um, emptied open stalls right now. Um, just because with Corona and everything, it was making things challenging sometimes. Um, we do have a couple goats that are over here. Um, we have a student who's graduated who uh, keeps them here now. Well, she has kept them here for a long time, but they're kind of hanging out on this side. They both have a friend, so that's nice. Um, we do have several of the horses that are still here, so some of your guys' favorites are still around. So Murphy's here kind of hanging out. Maybe he'll come say hello to the camera. What's up, buddy? This is Murphy's hello to you all. So Murphy is what we call a saddlebred. So saddlebred is kind of more of an English style of horse. Um, so that's part of the reason why he's really tall and maybe kind of narrower looking than some of our other um, horses that we've got here. So here we've got Izzy. She's one of the attention seekers that you guys like to come pet on all the time. Uh, Izzy is also a saddlebred. And you'll notice uh, she's got a white streak down her face. We called that a blaze. Murphy did not have that. Um, they're both kind of a brownish color, but in the horse world, um, we actually call these sorrels, where they're kind of the brownish color. So here we can see kind of a better look at Izzy kind of hanging out, munching on her supper. Kitty Joe is obviously a little bit different breed. So she's kind of shorter and stockier built. Um, you can see here she has either been sweating hard after being ridden, um, or got kind of warm today. So that's what uh, their hair looks like now. She's not wet anymore. She has since dried off. Um, but you can see kind of what their hair does when it gets a little matted up like that. Now, tomorrow morning she'll get brushed and loved on. Um, and it'll go back kind of to to its normalness. And you can see here, since it's getting colder out, um, the horses are getting kind of a thick, hairy, fuzzy coat on them. And if these horses were running around outside, they would have even more hair than what they do right now. Uh, since they're kept primarily just in the ag center, their hair is uh, not even as thick as some other horses are. So Cheyenne here, she's kind of most of your guys' buddy, most of your guys' favorites. Some of you guys will be walking her around here in the next couple weeks. Cheyenne's also just kind of munching on her hay. Uh, but you can see here kind of how thick and kind of how long some of their hair is. Um, so at this point, they have almost as much hair as uh, when we went over and looked at the cattle. Most of the time, you guys are used to horses being pretty slick. But you can see here, they've got plenty, uh, plenty of hair on them for winter. So if these guys were running outside, they would still be able to sustain their body temperature just fine um, if they were used to being outside. Uh, because they put on a thick, thick hairy coat for the winter. They eat plenty of hay, which their digestion helps keep them warm also. Um, so here's Cherry. Again, it's pretty quiet in here tonight. Everybody's kind of eating their supper, not really caring about too much. <clears throat> here's Shoni. Most of you guys like Shoni because she's got kind of the different colors on her. She's also got some face markings. Some different body markings as well. So most of these guys down here uh, are considered to be quarter horses. Uh, Cheyenne is actually what we call a Morgan horse, so that's the breed. So horses come in lots of different breeds, lots of different shapes, sizes, and colors. So if anybody knows Ed Minert, this is uh, Ed's horse. So most of these horses are boarded in, so people pay to keep them here. And you'll see some of these guys here um, are for the Riding for Success therapy riding program. So uh, they do therapy riding for people with... Um, physical, emotional uh, needs, and they can kind of help them out a little bit. So the uh, aisle is a little bit wetted down here just because in every evening after they do chores, um, we rinse it down just a little bit. Uh, basically the watering can that's got disinfectant in it to keep things clean. Uh, one thing you'll notice it's a little different. This was our chicken pen, and obviously we don't have chickens in here anymore, but we do have this bedded down. There's a heat lamp. Uh, we've got a bucket and some cords and things sitting here. So this pen is ready to go so when those sheep have those babies out there, um, or if I catch them before they have their babies out there, we bring them in here, they can have a heat lamp warm up, kind of get accustomed 
Uh, mommy can get accustomed to the babies, and then after a day or two when they're feeling good and healthy and strong, we'll take them back outside and kind of release them. This way they're protected a little bit more, um, and we, uh, we can keep a little closer eye on them for the first couple of days of their life. So that's kind of what's up as far as the animals go at the Ag Center. Like I said, it's uh, pretty quiet around here, and uh, we'll get the lights off and call it a day.